Hi everybody, Steve here. This is another video in the series on how to code generative art. Today is if statements. Let's get started. Instead of starting from scratch today, I'm going to start with what we worked on last week. Let me duplicate this and I'm going to get rid of this while loop stuff uh, and then let me get rid of the extra thing in the center. Now we should have rectangles and a grid, and we do. Very good. What I want to do with the if statement is choose what kind of shape we're going to put in here. So I can say if random two is less than one, then do a rectangle else do a circle we'll copy this down to here uh, and we can put circle and let me tidy the code so it's going to give me a rectangle half the time and a circle half the time so let's hit play and we can see that that in fact works so if you only have a choice of one or the other and you want to have it randomized, you can just put random right in this part of the if statement. But let's say you want three options. Uh, we'll do rectangle, circles, and triangles. In that case, we need a variable ahead of time. So we'll say uh, choice equals random three and then we'll say if choice is less than one then we'll do a rectangle else and now we have an if again and another parentheses if choice is less than two then we'll do a circle else and we don't need to do the if again because this is just, if it's not one or two, then it's gotta be three. Then we're gonna do a triangle. Triangle's a little more complicated, so we do x minus size one divide by two. That'll bring us to the left edge. And then comma y minus size one divide by two. That brings us to the top of the grid space then the next x y let's go from there down so then we're going to do x and we want to go to the edge on the right now so we do plus size one divide by two and then the y i think it's just y we don't have to move that at all so that should give us a triangle let's see if that works there we go, we got circles, rectangles, and triangles. I wish I had done these triangles a little differently, but that's what we got. Let's make the number across maybe 20, see what that looks like. Very nice. Now, one thing about this if statement, the order of this is important. If I said choice uh, less than two, and then this one less than one, Let's see what happens. We have rectangles and we have triangles, but we have no circles. So if choice is less than two, it's going to make a rectangle. It's not going to do this at all because uh, it's already done choice less than one in here. So when you're doing these if statements, if else, you want the lower number at the top and then go down. Now, of course, we don't have to have the choices be uh, the same amount. We could say the choice is a random 10, and if it's less than 1, we'll do a rectangle. If it's less than 5, we'll do a circle, or actually, let's do less than 8. And else, it'll do a triangle. So we'll hit play. And we have very few rectangles. We have a lot of circles. And we have a few triangles. Let's make the number across 10 so you can see that a little bit better. There are instances where you don't want to do if else. 
you might want to do an if statement and then another if statement. I want to do, you remember uh, moving the circle across the screen? I'm going to rebuild that real quick. Okay, got it built. We'll go ahead and try that. And it's going a bit slow, so let's do plus equals three. And there it goes. It's going a little faster and it's going off the screen. So let's add an if statement to that. If x is greater than the width, then we'll do x equals zero. So it'll loop back to the start. Let's try that. There it goes. And there it goes. It loops back and it'll just continue doing that. What if we reversed the direction of that circle. So right now we have x plus equals three. We'll do x plus equals dir for direction. And direction, we're gonna start off at three. Uh, if we want direction to become negative three, we can multiply direction by negative one. So if x goes greater than width, then direction um, times equal negative one, or direction equals direction times negative one. Uh, let's see what happens there. So it goes and it comes back. But now it goes off the screen. So one thing we could do is we could say if x is less than zero, then direction times equal negative one. And we can try that and it goes across. Let's speed it up a little bit. Um, we got direction equals three. We'll make direction equal to five now. Instead of two if statements, we could combine these because this part is exactly the same. So we're going to do an or statement. If x is greater than width, now you would think I would do or something like that. But unfortunately, in programming, at least in P5JS, you have to use these things. This is above your enter key and you have to use shift. So this stands for or x less than zero. And now we can get rid of this. So let's try that. And there we go. So we could also do another if statement for the y if we want. Let's do if uh, y is greater than height or y is less than zero, then uh, let's do direction uh, y, and we'll change this to direction x, and this will be times equal negative one. Uh, now we'll do y plus equal direction y, change this to x. Uh, we're going to do x comma y, we'll do direction x equal to five and direction y equal to, I don't know, let's make it four instead. Um, and then y is going to start off, uh, let's say instead of zero, let's start it off at 50. So what do you think is going to happen here? Let's try it. All right, boom, boom, doom, doom. There we go. That's fun. Now it's not art, but uh, it demonstrates if statements and uh, an or. I want to show you an and statement. We've shown you an or statement here. Let's do if x is greater than uh, width times 0 0.5 and y is greater than height times 0 0.5, then let's say the color of the circle is different. We'll do that. Uh, so fill, we'll just say fill zero, so it'll turn black. Else fill, let's say uh, we need white, 
So white is going to be, we're in HSB mode. Uh, zero, no saturation, but we want full brightness. That should give us white. So, oh, um, I forgot to mention, I just did this and statement and didn't say anything about it. So we got to do two ands, two ampersands, just like we did two of these. Uh, I wish we didn't have to do that, but we do. So let's hit play. And now it turns black when it's in this corner right here. Otherwise, it's white the rest of the way. With the greater than, we could have greater than equal to um, and less than equal to. Now, another thing is a not statement. So let's say instead of making this black when it's in that bottom corner, we want the opposite to happen. Uh, so how do we do a not statement? We've got all of this. I need to put something in front of this. So I'm going to need to add another parentheses to this. Make sure there's two. And now right here, I can put a exclamation point, I think it is. Putting an exclamation in front of something makes a not statement. Let me return to this times equals negative one thing. Uh, this can be used to pause the animation. We need another function for that. Uh, I usually like to put that at the bottom. So function, and this one is called key typed. So this function is going to be called anytime you type something on the keyboard. Now, as long as we're in this function key type, there's another if statement we could use. We'll say if key equal equal s or save. If key equals s save and then in quotes canvas dot uh, jpeg. So let's hit start and we'll go ahead and pause it and then I'm going to hit s and we should see this and we open this and we have a picture of our canvas which is very handy when you're doing art to be able to get a picture of your canvas let me see do i have a seed set up we have a palette so let's use that if i say save palette plus canvas.jpg let's try that we'll hit s and you see it's got a three canvas, which means it picked color palette number three. It would have been better if I'd put a space there. But we could also, if we were using a random seed, we could add that in here as well. If I want to get that piece of art again, I need to put in that seed. Now, that only works as long as you don't change anything in the code. Hey, this is Steve from the future. I wanted to add two things to this video. One is an alternate to if-then statements. It's called a ternary operator. I don't want you to commit this to memory exactly. I just want it to tickle your awareness. I want you to use the if-then statements, but you might see this in someone else's code. So I want you to know what it is. So here we have a regular if-then statement. And this here is the ternary operator version of that. What this is saying is, is x greater than 10? then make greater than 10 equal to the answer. Is x less than 5? Then make less than 5 equal to the answer. Otherwise, make between 5 and 10 equal to the answer. So the question mark basically takes the place of if, and this colon is taking the place of else. So this reduces the amount of times you're using answer equals. You're not using a curly bracket and you're getting rid of the if and the else and replacing it with just these uh, characters. So a little shorter, and you could use this if you want, but I'm going to continue using if-then statements. The other thing I can't believe I forgot before is called a Boolean operator, and that just means true or false. So I've got this pause variable, and it can equal true or false. And in the draw loop, I have if the pause equals false, then print high, Otherwise, it's not going to print high. So right now it equals false, so it's printing high. And also notice that this is counting up. 
that means it's just repeating high and instead of having high 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 it's just giving you the number of times it's counted high if you wanted to not do a whole bunch of stuff in the draw loop but you wanted the draw loop to continue operating then you could use something like this and there are other uses for boolean operators but let's say you wanted to test if pause equals true you could do this pause equals true and that's legit but you could also just say if pause and that is implied that this says pause equals true and another way of saying if pause equals false is to say if not pause and that would do the same thing that i had before so here it's counting the highs i'll leave a link to this in the video description now back to the other steve let me do another example something new we take my get colors from table duplicate that and right now it's doing a circle let's move that over let's do this the first x equals width times 0 0.33 uh, and the first y equals height times 0 0.33 uh, by the way it does want you to put a zero in front of the decimal so now if we do this we can do first x comma first y and we'll hit go and we've got our circle in a thirds position awesome but let's say we want the circle in a random thirds position we can do that by multiplying the 0.33 times the floor of random one comma three the result of this is either going to give me a one or it's going to give me a two because it's going to be less than three and we're flooring it so we're going to multiply the 0.33 times either a one or a two if we do 0.33 times two that's 0.67 and we can just copy this down to the height there we go and now we hit play and we're getting our circle in different thirds positions which is very nice we've got our main subject let's say you want a secondary subject in the opposite thirds position we need to get color and we need to fill we know that and we're going to do another circle do that this circle let's make uh, only a hundred diameter instead of the first x we're going to do the width minus the first x which is going to put it in the opposite part of the canvas and we'll do height minus the first y and that should give us two objects in different diagonals the different parts of the canvas they're all both on thirds positions i want to show you an example of a thirds position so this is my project radiant and you can see it's on a thirds position and there are different ways that this can have radiant parts to it uh, if i show you the rest of these you'll see what i'm talking about so this one has circles where this one is going out and this one looks more like petals whereas this is more straight lines so all of these uh, are being decided with if statements and also with thirds positions uh, so this one for instance is a thirds position here and a second thirds position here one more thing before we go let's return to this Let's say I want to look at the circles. I could override this random and make it say 7.5 and comment out the random. And now I get all circles. And if I want all rectangles, I could put this to 0 0.5 and they're all rectangles. So that can be helpful when you're working on something in particular, like I'm trying to do the triangles and I don't want to look at rectangles and circles, so I can override that. That's all I have for you in this video. 
Uh, now, comments. You are always welcome to leave comments or questions in the YouTube comments section. I also have a Discord that you could join and you can ask questions there or you could post art there. In the next video, we're going to be talking about vertex and curve vertex. If you like this video, you can give it a like. Da 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 da. Thank you for watching. Bye.